Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back. We're with hello, Tracy hello. Green. My mic is working today and my headphones, I can hear you. There was a good reason why they couldn't hear us, guys, because there's this <laughs> fluke about joining later that choosing the microphone. Totally not Tracy's fault. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> Tracy knows how to use computers, everybody. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> All right. So I know it was a it was a tough time for everybody, but we made it through and we're here. You guys have been so far coming so far with all your deliverables and this whole quest. And it is time to make your presentations shine. We have um, Tony in the house who may give us some insights into his presentation with his group in the last quest. If you are curious. Um, it's not going to show it to you, but he can tell you all about it. And um, what do we have? Do we have anybody who wants to raise their hand, come to the stage, ask questions, show show what they have, and have Tracy um, just ooh and awe over it, and also tell you what could be improved? Don't be all afraid. Right. Yep. Well, Seth said, uh, he never doubted you on the computer oh. stuff. So. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I was like, it's, I broke it. I broke it. That was me. Um, okay, so how about, Tracy, give us um, your top tips for presentations in this context. Sure. So I think, right, we really want to reframe what what is the goal here, right? We, we've gone through, we've done, we've done the engagement with, with the client. We're now ready to show yeah. our work. Well, we don't have that much time, right? Usually it depends on the kind of demo. For this demo, we're going to say we're just going to do our top, our top, you know, shows, you know, the top, top, you know, uh, top tips. I want to say, but it's not, it's not top tips. <laughs> the best but, of the but, best. Right? Yeah. Best of the best, right? So I really focus on the most value. Like what are the maybe three things that you can show and make sure they're coherent, right? Let's say that, you know, the lead conversion, the whatever, but you really want to make sure that you're showing something cohesive. And the most important thing I tell you is make it a story. Make sure you have user records in there and you make up like whether people like people use the office characters. I use Taylor Swift always in my demos. My dog always shows up. Just make it fun because you right, you want to make it fun because it's if you just kind of go through and drag and drop, you're like, oh, it's boring. No one gets excited. You really, this is your chance to get people excited about your work. So my top tip is definitely uh, rehearse it. Don't do not do it on the fly. Make sure you have a script. You don't have to follow it to the T, but know what button you're going to click when and what, what should show up. And the most important thing also is if things don't work as th there should be, which is going to happen a lot, just keep going. A lot of times you're notice it more than the client notices it. I think mm -hmm. that's the really thing is people get really upset. Like, oh, you say, oh, that was supposed to do that. Hmm, let me check on next time I have that working and kind of just go with the flow. I think that's really important tip as well. For sure. Yeah, I remember um, another group was doing personas yesterday, I believe, and they had a picture of Ryan Reynolds for one of their personas. Nice. And it was Ryan um, SDR. But mm. just the, just using that character and, and just bringing something familiar, like a famous yes. actor or a funny name, clever, um, yes. clever use of words. It, not someone else um, made made kind of a clever name based on um, these personas, and it it was just it brought a little bit uh, more creativity and interest. It keeps yes, the, we're we're your audience, and we want to stay engaged, and um, so make it yeah. fun for us. Yeah, for sure, fun. And I think also it doesn't really apply this one, but just in general, I try to use. Let's say um, I did. Uh, I did a client, they were a nonprofit and they, were, they did legal aid. And so I made all the characters from Mockingbird, right? It was like all, so like I really made it or like really famous judges that they've known. So I made it really like, it was not only was it like a story, but I made it relevant to like their world that were like, oh, it was kind of funny where I went, oh, it was like Norma Ray for like, because it was a union thing. So I don't know who Norma Ray is, but like, it's a very, very, very famous movie. But like things like that, where I just try to really make sure that it's, a, it's your last chance in this situation let the client know that you heard everything they said, right? These, this is what I heard you say. These are the kind of people that you work with. I'm going to, I'm going to pair it back to you. What I heard. 
right? You could make all the <clears throat> the users like have last names of mountains or something because exactly. they're outdoorsy, whatever those those types of little exactly. It just it's just a small things where it just goes a long way. I always tell people this. I told my my nephew who's twenty five now when I left college. Like extra credit doesn't stop when you get out of school, right? When you're for your client, extra credit like if they mention, let's say that you're like. Their favorite show is The Office. For like, let's use that, right? If they, you know, you have you know conversations. You throw in whatever their favorite show is, right? You you pick up on those little cues as you're building relationships, and when you use that in your demo, it just endears you even more to the client. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And you you guys have made some great um, POCs and those websites you've been working on. Um, you've really been listening and and getting a good feel for what the company is. Um, what and else? Do you, I, I suppose you're like, do, we talk about like time-wise, like how much each presentation would be, because you really don't, like we don't have time to show everything. So my recommendation is to write, obviously you want to show something in the demo, but if you want to have like some kind of slides, but you don't want to have slides, like 15 slides and 10 minutes of demo, right? Really show what you want to show, like show something, maybe whatever you want to show, maybe, you know, you get to show your persona, whatever, show one persona and then show a really good user story. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to, you don't have to throw the kitchen sink into the presentation. You really mm -hmm. want to focus it and, and show yeah. off your top skills. So Tony is here. Can you come, can you raise your hand so I can bring you? I don't know if I can bring you back. Let's see. There we go. I'm going to have you share a little bit i'm not sure i mean i think pretty much nailed it all um yeah. yeah just with i know just from my group wasn't me in particular but uh if you are showing like slides or one of your products uh please yeah just rehearse because i think we had one person who basically just read the entirety of what they were presenting. I think it was the architecture diagram. How and was that to listen to? It <laughs> was not very fun. It was somebody from my group too. Um, yeah. But uh, like they, they went by each block and it's like, I mean, you could have just, it was something that could have easily just summarized and uh, in doing so they kind of went over their time. So just be cognizant of that. And so kind of keep it. Right idea of what you're going to say and just just paraphrase summarize you don't have to read your product out line by line okay so to write down this summarize practice what how did you divide up the presentation in your through your team or how did you see people divide it up did some um, people just have one each person group was presenting different. Whole like our group was it was supposed to be like uh each of us presented one product but like i said Due to time constraints, we didn't all get to go through, but it was okay because I think I talked like every week beforehand, so it was all right. Sure. Um, but I mean, I don't have yeah. that real. I mean, it's a really good point, right, Tony? I think having that plan ahead of time and also being ready to like to to really time yourself during your time, so your your co your cohort can actually get time. Be really mindful if you are breaking up, knowing that you know, okay, I have if I have a minute stick to that minute to make sure you get it done so the next person can also have a chance true exactly yeah, um but yeah it was i think you just, just said it Talia, but like however they do it just make sure you kind of have a plan because i think there was another group who um it was one person but they did a they didn't show any products but they did like a, a demo of of what they built which was i thought they did a great job i think everybody kind of committed them on what mm -hmm. they did so as long as you kind of have an idea of what you're going to do, then yeah. you'll be all right. So how has the experience of the quest translated into getting a job or your work, if you're working now? Huh. Can I ask, I mean, I want to add one more thing, like one before you okay. go off top. Yeah. yeah. Show something. Even if you don't have, just make sure you show one thing. Like, don't get overwhelmed. If you feel overwhelmed, just say, okay, we're going to show one slide or one thing. Just make sure that you you end it with a presentation because you don't want to jip yourself. So don't get so caught up that you don't have everything done. Just make sure that you show up is what I like to say. Nice. Tony, do you want to, there was quite, there were questions last time about how this presentation 
can be used? Like, do we show it here? Do we put it in the, you know, how can we use this in, in more ways than just between us? Talking about the presentation? Yeah, I mean, and just the experience of it as well. What, oh, um, what did it do for you? Um, it just, for, for me, it itself. really just opened up my eyes to, you know, what to expect once I do kind of land a job. Right now, I'm actually in the terminal leave from the military, so I'm enjoying that. But mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I am kind of actively, semi-actively uh, looking for that next role. But uh, right. it just opened my eyes to, you know, what to expect, because I think coming in to the quest, I kind of expected to be doing work predominantly in Salesforce, but this kind of brought me into or showed me like more of what I can expect to do in working on a project. And um, I was actually doing a project management course in parallel to this. So a lot of the stuff was refresher, but it also showed me some stuff that I hadn't seen. So I think cool. it kind of helped bring me to realization a little bit more. So it, it was enlightening in that sense for me. Very nice, very nice. And um, there are a few more people have joined since we started. Is anybody interested in asking any questions or showing any work? Get some feedback from our amazing coach, Tracy. We're here to help. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I know it kind of it might be intimidating because other people, but you really, like, you're really helping others. If, you, if you're willing to come show your work, you're helping, like, not only yourself, but you help others. So if you, if you can, if you want to, just show anything or ask any questions. I mean, we're really here to help. If you have no questions at the show, then for sure, don't worry about it. But so if you're sitting back in your chair saying, oh, I wish I could do it, just, we're, we're, all, we're all friends here. No one's, you know, no one's going to yell at you. No one's gonna say anything wrong. We're only gonna help you. Definitely. <clears throat> Should we play some Taylor Swift? Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Y'all <I'm> down right <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. So we have a couple people who said, "Are we going to present as a team or just our team leader?" That's a great that's a question. question. That's really uh, that's up to you, right? That's again, you get to choose how. Normally, if you're if you're doing a presentation with a client, it depends on the time you had, right? Um, it would be usually sometimes it's a product owner who does it, which is the, or the team lead, right? Who shows it, or if there's something that you worked on. Let's say I worked on something, I'd start it up like, hey, we're going to show you X, Y, and Z, and then you say, okay, I'm going to bring Tali up to show you what Talia did for a lead conversion. And you kind of do it that way. So it really depends on the timing. It depends on how you want to do it. Uh, it really, it's just about, you know, making sure you have that ahead of time. I think it's a, it's a really good thing. But, you know, if, if you haven't presented at all during the presentation, maybe you should be the one who presents during the, you know, the last final thing. So, yes. Yeah. And if you are doing a demo in addition to slides, you might want to break that up between people just so that you have less to prepare exactly to prepare for because the demo is something that you really yeah. should work like like a like a you have a soul script and path that you're going down and know exactly what you're going to say so you're not wandering around and, and make it you know time just right uh with the uh you know content that you're going to put in there and have in there so you, you want to make sure that that's you know it like the back of your hand and then the other people know their slides um, if you had to do all of it or you were kind of just mixing it up, it, it could get like more uh, time consuming for you to prepare. Um, and Seth's question, I want to answer that, right? Seth, I, I hear what you're saying, but no, live demos is the way to go and things are going to happen. You have to write, it's like anything else. You have to be prepared for things not to go right. You have to just, you're showing what you could do, right? And part of it is being live. And, and I'll tell you more times than not, something's going to go wrong. And that's, that's it. But you have to be prepared like, hey, oh, well, that was supposed to happen there. Sorry, we'll make sure we get that, you know, fixed and get back to you. You have to just keep going with the punches. But if you show, if you show a video creation, to me, 
doesn't show me that you did the work. That shows me that there's smoke and mirrors, right? This is a time really to show you the real, the real deal, the real work. So I understand the fear, but it's just going to take practice and just, you know, and just know everyone knows you and your client knows that something can go wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, right. Like the other day, right. I came in my, my headphones didn't work. That happens. Right. We had to like, you know, get through it and though, that's just life. So the more you have practice of just rolling with the punches, the better. And this is a great place. Yeah. To do it. I mean, you can have a backup video, which is something that professionals would do in many cases because they go into a different environment and they don't know it will the internet have a problem they can't control it they might bring a backup laptop a backup internet source they do all these things to make sure that they can be live and do what they need to do but in this case if you had to have a a video you know in your back pocket just in case a weird thing has happened send us the link and maybe somebody can share you know but really it's um we don't want to sit there and and watch somebody who's playing to a camera that isn't real because there's a different energy when people are talking to real people. Uh, unless you're a professional, um, it's it's very difficult to have that same kind of um, voice or, or, or energy. Now, um, you also just won't get the experience of working through your nerves or whatever it is that, that may be um, challenging. <clears throat> it says, Erica says, um, yeah. Tony's, yeah. Is that, so is that any additional question? suggestions? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, suggestions that if you're doing it, it's almost like, right. It's so crazy. It's going to be easier if you do it yourself. And I don't want to encourage that. I want you to encourage it doing a team. So I don't want to discourage anyone, but if you do it by yourself, then you really have to know, you know, your timing, you know, what's going next. You don't have to throw it open. So, Hey, Talia, I'm hoping Talia work. worked right. And there's, is that working in the team? That's where, you know, the trust and that your stuff's going to work. So you're almost for a suggestion for you working by yourself is just make sure you, you write. Like to me, I do a, a I, I do an outline. I don't script everything. Cause I'm just, that's not how I go. I can't read off scripts. So if you, if you do better, just make sure that you have something written down next to you. So you know what each point you want to make and make sure you know what step I should do. Step one, click here, step two. And I have that just a side note next to me off camera. So I can always look at my notes. So that's my suggestion right. if you're doing solo. That's for everybody, but especially if you're doing solo, because you you really are in control of everything. Yeah. Erica's in her own team right now. So that's for a while. That's great. And um, there was an, she had another question or maybe a comment. I really liked how this quest has provided the opportunity to bring together BA, Agile, and Salesforce together. That's, she likes how this, this quest has brought that together. And, and oh. that is kind of like you go into consulting and that's really what's going to happen. You're going to be BA agile Salesforce yes. party. You know, for a smaller product, like if you're on an enterprise project, then no, but if you were on a mid-sized project and you, for your first time out, is there a consultant? You, you definitely wear all those hats. And so it really, this is why I really like the clicked experience because this is a real world example of what's going to happen when you go, when you go out in the, into the real world. I said that twice. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, I work for Coastal Cloud as well. And we we do mid-size companies. And that's exactly what Tracy said. Um, there's a lot of doing a, a lot of things. We don't have a separate um, person for every single thing. Well, I'll tell you, right, we have time, right? I've been in the ecosystem for two and a half years. And it's because I've moved so quickly because I had to wear every hat. Now, I think there's a place that, you know, if you're on an enterprise where you just do BA or you're just product manager, I think there's a place for that. But if you're looking for experience, the best experience to do is to go someplace with a mid, mid size where you get, you get to try everything out. And then you really hone your skills and you're like, oh, I really like BA work. Then you say, okay, my next job, I want to be BA or I'm going to be solution architect. It really gives you that chance to try, to try on all the roles right. in a very, you know, heated fire. Yeah, you realize. <laughs> You may realize that that's your strength is the, those soft skills of communicating exactly. with clients and, and getting them to tell you everything you really need to know and, and not leave out anything. <laughs> I'm gonna... So okay. we have a question in, can Tracy define what is midsize? Sure. Um, I believe that they say, um, 
I want to say it's from like 50 to maybe 200 users. I don't know. I, I know it's like one to 50 is small and like enterprise is like a thousand. So it's somewhere in between. It's like, it's like under 200 users is mid size. So that, right, it's really, it's the, it's not only the uh, the users, but also the amount of money the company makes. So there's definitions. Uh, you could definitely just um, Google that, and there's definitely uh, out there in the Salesforce world what, what the caps are. But it's an enterprise is something you're working on for, let's say, like Vanessa just got off a product for, she was working on it for a year. That's enterprise. Like six months is probably the longest, and that's a long engagement on a mid size to, to do implementation. Mm -hmm. It's three months, yeah. four months. Yeah, and and at, uh, where I work, the exact that's exactly right. But sometimes they'll come back with a new project, a new oh, of thing course, is yeah. coming up. But it, but it, what um, Vanessa's working on are extremely huge projects that last a long time, and very complex. That makes it difficult, um, right? And, and that makes it difficult because, like, it, you don't know what you know. It's almost easier to have the smaller products because you're always going to know at the end of it, like, hey, I know how I did because I'm showing you as you go along. And sometimes on a big enterprise, they make you wait to, to roll everything out because they want everything out. So it's it's almost, I think it, for for my like my style of work, I enjoy working with the mid-sized products mm -hmm. a lot better than enterprise just because I just like that. Let's do a, a chunk of work. Have your users use it. Come back. Tell me how they did it. You do the next chunk versus having to wait a year for someone to touch my work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Rebecca asks, any suggestion about how to add our experience with Click projects on our resume? I have some ideas. Don't need to, yeah, oh yeah, for, go for it, because I do know. I mean, I'm sure I can well, guess, but you have ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, off the top of my head, you have different sections on your resume. What you put there is up to you, but um, there's a section you can put skills or, you know, and in those skills section, I would put everything I found to be a skill that I learned in the quest. Even if I didn't do it on an actual paid job, I would put business analysis and process maps and, you know, all the things you've done. Um, you bullet those or put like them in different um, groupings. Then in, I have a section like education and I put my, you know, college degree. I put a pay pay moon limb course and master class and cons uh, consulting. And I'd put clicked, blah blah blah. You know, and maybe if there's a, a couple words about what that is, you know, you can totally do that. It really depends on how much space you have, but I would put it there, um, make it a little obvious, like what it's about. So it's. Um, so what someone's scanning it, they can say, oh, this was a, an experience where they learn these things. Tony, did you have something to say? Uh -oh. uh, so I guess I'm, I'm doing like a, a fellowship for hiring our heroes. And I think I had already had my resume in before I did this, but um, like I did annotate it in my LinkedIn. And I know that some people took like their final presentation and posted in their LinkedIn there's that and then kind of like what you said where I would probably just incorporate that in the training section mm -hmm. of kind of bullet points of you know what you've done or what you've built during the experience totally yeah definitely blast blast it on LinkedIn put it on you know your highlighted section on LinkedIn in many cases people are getting hired from people seeing their LinkedIn profile. So make sure you don't neglect um, putting it prominently on your LinkedIn profile in favor of your resume, which people go, and then they, they don't look at it very much. But LinkedIn is way more interesting to look at than a resume. And uh, you can put pictures and links to this and that. And uh, so I would put it in my section, um, for either education or certifications, really, because you're kind of kind of come out of this, completed it. You're you're one of the elite people who have completed this class. So many people have not been able to complete for various reasons, and you got to the end. And I would um, put that in there, like you you completed it, and uh, almost like a certification. And uh, 
what was there was another question about practicing yeah. a presentation in Aramid before a final presentation. I think that's a great idea. I, I've talked because I I'm like you, Seth. Like I get worried about technology, and I can tell already from the questions you're asking, you're worried about that. So maybe uh, Jeff could give out a link that's like a test link where people can just go and they can just go up and they can just test it themselves because it doesn't have to be this link, right? It can just be a link. So maybe you could ask Jeff if you can set that up. That's a good I good question. A I will write it, make a note. Um, but really, if you have ever presented anything within any of these meetings you should know how to do, to, to present, you know, from your screen. Well, I don't um, think that he's, I don't think he's worried about how, yeah. I think he just wants to do a run through for his nerves. It seems like, like make sure that everything's gonna work. So I don't think he's like, how do I do it? It's more like, can I have the time to like do a, right. a dress rehearsal? I'm guessing. So <laughs> could you, is it, Seth, do you wanna come up and raise your hand and tell us what you're thinking? This is, this is the best time to practice right now. Talk to everybody. <laughs> Do you know how to raise your hand? That's a that's an important thing to know. Otherwise, we won't be able to bring you to the stage. Questions <laughs> were answered. <laughs> no, you do. <laughs> You're not coming up. Come on. Um, so, what Eric I wanted. Had a great question. Real quick, let's yeah. ask. So I would suggest, because your question is, would you suggest adding other developers, deliverables on the link as well? I would, you have two highlight spots, right? Whatever you're trying to get your job, if it's, if it's invitation, show your, your demo. If it's your BA, show your process, whatever, right? You, whatever you are trying to get your job at, whatever Killer. deliverable makes most sense for that, use that in your highlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going for everything under the sun, then you might have a hard time deciding. But if you're going for all these admin roles, you know, there'll be something more specific to that. Um, oh, what was the other question? Make a portfolio on Salesforce. Can it go there as well? You can put anything you want, Shelly, yes. on your LinkedIn page. Um, the, uh, yeah, it, I really go to other people's pages and who have really well fleshed out um, pages and see what they have there. You can link to anything under the sun. You can link to a movie that you produced. You can um, link to a website. You can put a picture. You can do whatever. So different kinds of people with different kinds of careers are going to use LinkedIn in different ways to highlight the things that they've done. Uh, I do also suggest that you make use of posting about it. Um, you know, uh -huh. people aren't going to get bored of you posting about it because nobody's sitting on your page looking for new content every day. They're just going to see a couple things that you do every once in a while. If you posted about every deliverable that you did for the next two weeks, you know, people are going to see maybe one of those. Um, and it's going to be interesting. It might catch the eye of recruiters and people who work in, in different companies who are looking for people like you, please don't like if you, anyone has seen like, for example, Anna, Sabo, or I forget, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Um, she's posting a lot. She's getting a lot of people um, interested in what she can do. She's making little videos with her phone. Um, and people love to see your TC faces and pictures. So if you do post, make sure you have at least a screenshot, if not a photograph of something. Um, but these, these are the things you want to do to get noticed by people on LinkedIn, regular posting, the algorithm will love you. You can um, tag all your teammates. You can tag the coaches. You can tag me, Jeff, everybody tag, tag your heart out because um, LinkedIn will not only show when, when I come and I see that, Oh, someone's tagged me. I will be compelled to comment on that. And when I comment on it, LinkedIn says, this is interesting to Talia. And it, I'm going to show it to Talia's followers and Talia's contacts. So now not only have you shown it to me, you've shown it to everyone that is connected to me. So make use of that uh, feature. And yeah, was there any other question there? Okay, so if AirMeet link isn't available, maybe a Zoom free version would work. So um, what about practicing here? I, I'm, I don't see that it would be any more 
um, useful than just using Google Meet or Zoom to practice, you know, showing it to your teammates or you could um, create but a little bit of people question, that I guess the present. question it would be, yeah. Seth, That's are you worried about air meet? Take, like how my, my mic didn't work last week? Is that what concerns you versus you like practicing your presentation? Is it is it is it actual air meet technology versus just practicing your presentation? Yeah, you that's can answer in the chat. To come up and talk to us. <laughs> if you, if you or want. you put in the chat. You don't, I'm obviously, if yeah, you yeah. want to come up, you would have come up. <laughs> so don't think, yeah. So if you, you answer in the chat, Seth, or you can come up, it's mm -hmm. up to you. Have you uh, just Okay, right then here. definitely, yeah. exactly. Then you do not need it. You definitely, you can use Zoom, you can use Google Meet, you can use anything that's free. You definitely do not need AirMate. You can, add, you can do it for yourself. You can ask a friend to like be on the other side, but any digital yeah. platform will definitely work. And make sure that everyone in your team knows how to click raise hand in this platform because that's, that's sometimes people are like, where's the button? How do I do it? They say, I want to talk. I want to speak. Bring me to the stage. And I'm like, I, you have to click this button first, then I can bring you to the stage. So make sure that you know how to do that if you haven't done so already, Seth. And then... The next thing is, if you want to share your screen right now, I will let you share your screen. Anything you have on your screen, just to practice, if you've never shared within um, an AirMeet meeting, that might be something you want to do right now. And I, I'd be happy to let you take the take over and share anything on your screen just to practice. If anyone wants to come up, because you've seen people struggle, you know, they come up and they go, uh, my computer is not letting me do it, something wrong, you know, so why don't, if you haven't ever shared in this particular format, please come up to the stage, raise your hand, and I will let you just practice that and make sure your technology is not fighting you. So please raise your hand if you'd like to do that. Where presentation mode is on their screen. Right, that's another thing. Um, within the, like, your. Uh, Erica is saying um, it's also great if everyone knows where presentation mode is on their screen because a lot of people make these slide decks. They see, you know, you see all the slides on the side, but they don't necessarily ever look at it full screen. Is that what you mean, Erica? They need to know how to make it completely covering the screen. And because right now I'm looking at this, um, I'm going to show you what this looks like. We're looking at. Um, Google Slides, and in order to click um, into a full screen, I click Slideshow, or I click this icon, Enter, with, on the Mac, but I can click Slideshow, and then it goes full screen within the tab. So when I shared here, I went down to the bottom where I have the, the rectangle with the up arrow um, in, in AirMeet, click that, and then it has tabs on the top for what part of my screen I'm sharing, the whole window, the whole screen, like you're gonna see the time and every icon in the bottom, not recommended because it's a little busy. Um, and then um, I can even show you what it, that would look like. You can see my thousands of tabs. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Here we go, entire screen. Here we go. You, you gotta select entire screen and then share. Okay, this is my entire screen. <laughs> Not the best. Now I want to, <laughs> so you can see now I'm flipping through my tabs. Wow, crumble cookies, what's going on here? Not not the best. So you want, you want to have like an isolated tab. So let's go hide that, get off of here. Isn't that fun? <laughs> So the question about crumble cookies, are they getting, yeah. I just found, found one in my neighborhood. I didn't know we had one. Are they getting yeah, We're never going to talk about crumble cookies for the rest of the time, I think, because that's right. going to happen. <laughs> oh, but no, the, um, so the next option is to do your window. And so a window is like a collection of tabs. You want the one, you know, if you, if you choose the window that, um, what do I have here? I have no idea what I'm sharing right now, but mm, I have really, yeah, there we go. There's a, it's a window with two tabs, but. If you chose the wrong window, you wouldn't be able to see what you want. Last option is to just share your tab. I know this this may be tedious for some people, but 
I see a lot of people struggling when they first come up to, to share. I hope this is helpful for someone. <laughs> and now I'm sharing just the tab that has my, um, my clicked presentation in it that you saw before. I hope that's helpful. Yay, this was helpful. Uh -huh. um, and I don't know if people are gonna play music that probably would be a bit distracting uh, to have music playing. I don't recommend that, um, but definitely be engaging and, and joyful in your presenting. We don't wanna hear people talking uh, this robots. monotone robots. and sad. I really don't want to be here, and I, you know, maybe, but it may be the middle of the night, so we can understand. You know, it's sometimes hard to bring it up. You know, but um, anyway, so have some coffee and <laughs> try not to talk too fast. Um, anything else? Oh, another another good tip for presenting is is not too many words on a page, um, not to, on a on a slide. So. You, one, you don't necessarily want to read completely from a slide, like you have like a, a block of text here that you're just going to read every word. Um, if there is text and you're just kind of screenshotting something that has text on it, you don't have to read everything. Just tell us about it. You know, tell us the story of what that is. Um, but in many cases, you might have a, a slide that is just a title um, or says a question, like, what does your company need? or why are we here? You know, that that can happen. Um, but Tracy, you have more experience with these kinds of presentations. What what were your slides depicted? Yeah, I will tell you. Like I actually, it's kind of it's not the same thing, but it's a presentation, right? I just was at Force Landia and I presented, and you had to have a slideshow because that was part of the presentation. And I had two slides, and the rest of it was my demo. So I had the slides up there, and it was just. Um, one just said like a topic was like level set. I want to say, why are we here right now? So I had just, I said level set and I had, why are we here? And I had a quote to kind of lead us into it. And I had an agenda, what we're going to go over. And the rest of it was my actual, my actual dev work. Mm -hmm. So it was very sparse. There was not a lot of words. It was definitely just a, to orientate, orient yep. people yep. talking about, right? Here's what we're going to do. Here's what I'm going to show you. I showed you it. This is what you got out of it. So very sparse for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can put images um, that relate to the company's, you know, products or mission or whatever you want to do to make it kind of branded in a way for them. That, But remember that you don't want to put text over a busy background. Maybe a, an image is over here and then maybe text over here. You can, you can find templates for, for presentations that, kind of give you some, you know, good guidance on how to organize a page um, that is pleasing and is not too overstimulating and hard to read. All right. It's also great if everyone knows where presentation mode is. Yeah, um, we already did that. And let's see. Yeah, I mean, most people have good, um, Gmail accounts. You have Google Meet. You can create a meeting with your team. You have access to free Zoom accounts. Um, create those meetings. Share your screen. Practice with them. Practice with your dog. Practice with your friends. Um, you could even call a meeting within our Quest main group and say, hey, who wants to come and just practice presenting to each other to another team? I mean, we, it's it's up to you um, because we're here and, and maybe someone would would get something out of it and they you know you'd get the back and forth. Thought, hey, team twelve, we we're going to present to team nine just to practice. Um, it it would help you um, know what kind of hiccups and it's not the final thing. You know, if it goes a little long and funky and you realize, oops, I need to move this thing, um, nobody's going to be like, oh, what's going on? This isn't perfect. You know, <laughs> we're not going to be that harsh anyway. But um, in that in that context, when you have like a one on one uh, team on team helping each other out, it, it could be a, a game changer for your final presentation. 
my YouTube channel where I have um, presentations. I can share that. Let me get that. These presentations I am sharing. One was for the Talent Stacker Volunteer Project final presentation. And one was for a job um, interview assignment for fast, slow motion. And both of them had the intention of presenting to um, the client. The client was the audience. <laughs> and so I, I made both of these. I had a team in the first one. Rebecca was on my team. But I kind of redid the video. Um, we had a live one, but it wasn't recorded properly. And so uh, I had to redo the whole thing. But Rebecca, who is in this meeting right now. She is on one of these videos. I'm going to get the link for you. But I used templates for the design and just uh, customize them. I didn't have to do the same kind of deliverables that you guys are doing at all. So this is a very different situation. It was mostly like introduction, you know, slides, and then uh, showing a demo of what we made in the org for the client. Some of the first one is like introduction, demo, introduction, demo. We, we all took turns. And then the other one for that I did by myself <clears throat> has a, a number of slides introdu introducing and then a demo and then a final slide closing. And I did do a like a agenda for the, I think at least one of them. I don't remember if I did it for both of them, but yeah. So you can watch that if you like. Um, <clears throat> if we need to sanitize a doc, i.e. remove the client name for a deliverable, we'd like to showcase on LinkedIn, for example, can we offer, can you offer any tools, apps that would help? Like you can yeah, blur the, out things. You can blur out, but the best thing to do is just write it's your demo on a thing is so you can just go in there and uh, just change the names and take out identifying for issues. What we do is we just, anything that's identifying to the client, we remove it or we just rename it. So I've never gone in and I've never been able to have a tool that just goes fix it besides you can blur, like you can like, you know, blur it out. But you, you, for a demo, you definitely want to remove, like you just want it to do it at depth. Like if you just something for the client and you want to show it on a, for, you know, the real world, you just go and you kind of rebuild it in a sense, or you take the data out. You just because you can do all your test data, right? You can just put different test data in there to make sure that it's not, you know, um, yeah, PPI or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, and then get permission maybe if there's anything else that is kind of uh, particular to them that could reveal company secrets or some. You know. Yeah, they're not going to let you do company secrets, but sometimes they use your name, right? Depends on, it's a lot of times, like, yeah. for, like, what's called a case study is you actually want your clients to let you show you their work, and then you have to get, you just have to get permission, right? So that's right. definitely that's want right. to get permission or use it. Yeah. They, they like the publicity in many cases, but sometimes it's, it might be a, a, an organization that isn't ready to share what they've done with the world. Um, and so you need to make sure that it's the right time. Or they don't want to, they don't want to reveal that they've used outside source for it either. Sometimes they don't want that. So you may not well, be able to share. Sometimes it's just right. Sometimes it's just, it's, you know, there's, constraints like right there's compliance issues so there's there's many different reasons why just make sure you get information like sometimes you know just ask beforehand if not just remove any identifying information yep you're welcome pearl and everybody who said thanks we're here to help you Still got a number of people here. Any other burning questions? We could wrap up now if you want. Um, don't wait for me to click end session for you to think of that juicy question. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else 
Um, it is Friday at the end of the day. I feel like, like we're, we're, you're, you're just pulling the time. If people are ready to yeah. go, we're ready to go. There's yeah, really yeah no for to sure. Go. If you're ready, guys, we can we can call it a, a meeting. Okay. <laughs> how much? Uh, uh, that is very relative. That's a relative question. It's the question was everything. how much coffee is too much yeah. coffee before a presentation. For me, I'm allergic to coffee, so that's zero coffee for me. Plus, you don't want to see me hopped up on any on any caffeine. Like you, do, I don't need caffeine. So yep, yep, I do not <laughs> drink coffee either. So that would be zero. But for you, it could be uh, a lot. I have no idea. Yeah, I think <laughs> water and rest is a good are good things for presentations. And not not in that order. order. Just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sleeping in the middle of the um, yeah yeah try to do your work as early as possible my problem I biggest problem in my presentation was not realizing how long it would take me to one create the presentation and practice it till I could do it really well so I was like up all night before and then creating the video oh my god the video problems I was having Wah! so Try to do it well in advance, get things done. Don't make a video like I did, which was crazy. And um, yeah, it was a lot of work. I, I literally made the presentation for most of these like the night before. So not. It's like, a, it's like the old, like right when in school, your paper's due, you wait till night before to start it. Don't do that. That was me every single night. <laughs> every single, every single uh, presentation was a all night thing. Cause I just couldn't focus until it was like absolutely necessary. I hope you guys are over that um, uh -huh. part of your, if you ever were like that. Um, so anyway, guys, thank you so much. I think we're, we're out of here. Um, Have a great weekend. We're, we're in the Slack channel. Um, ask me any questions, general, uh, silly, or otherwise, we'll, we'll be there for you. Okay. Bye. Bye guys.